Welcome to Watch and Learn. Today we're going to show you some of our favorite things that don't get used as often as they should in Pro Stitcher. I'm Kim Sandberg and I'm Christina Whitney. We're both studio educators here at Handy Quilter and we are continuing with the amazing blues quilt. <laughs> I love this quilt. And today we get to play with one of my favorite things, Pro Stitcher. <laughs> yes. Before we jump into that though, yeah. I just want to do a quick little shout out to our wonderful videographer, fancy terms, whatever you want to call them, but Jacob for putting this awesome blues music to the time lapse. Yes. So get kind of a good chuckle out of that, finding the, the right music for the time. So anyway, okay, back it's to Pro a, Stitcher. It's been a fun addition. <laughs> yes. So back to Pro Stitcher. Yes. All right. So what are the two tools that we're going to talk about today that just don't get used in Pro Stitcher maybe as much as they should? Well, the first one's Mark. Mm -hmm. So Mark is a great tool that you can use for stitch in the ditch, mm -hmm. creating your own straight line designs, right. echoing, um, but anything that's a straight line. Right. So we're, we're going to show that. And then we're also going to show how to group designs together. Mm, okay. So a lot of people ask, you know, they want to use different designs and make it a continuous. Right. So we're going to kind of walk through that step and also talk through some of the things that you need to be aware of with the designs to make it work. Okay, perfect, so. perfect. So two really great options mm -hmm. when you want to add a little bit of that custom touch exactly. to quilting with Pro Stitcher. Okay, so let's start with the first one, Mark. And okay. I love <laughs> Mark. I love using Mark. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic tool. So let's uh, take a look at the block that we're going to use Mark in. Okay, well that block over there by you is this one? little hashtag. I love so it. So make sure you hashtag Handy Quilter. <laughs> that was really cheesy. And I'm going to bring the machine all the way over here. Okay. It's such a fun little block. Yeah, and it, it's a little simple, and I, I just want the quilting to be pretty simple on it, too. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I, I want to do kind of an echo inside on the blue uh -huh. going all the way around. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the edge of my foot. Mm -hmm. And you can put a different foot on if you want, like, the glide foot would be really good if you wanted it closer. Mm -hmm. Just use the edge of the foot. But I've got it in position, so it's a quarter of an inch in. On the Pro Stitcher screen, I'm going to hit the Pro Stitcher tab. I've got record on. Mm -hmm. And then over here in the sidebar, I've got this button called mark. Right. You'll also notice it has the diamond symbol on it. So mm -hmm. I can use my handlebars on the machines that have the programmable handlebars right. with that third button. Okay, so I'm just going to push and it dings, and I'm gonna refresh. So you can see on the screen, I've got a start and an end point. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna move the machine over, finding my next position, hit that button again, and I'm creating a line. And I'm just gonna continue quickly around this block. It's so nice being able to Keep your eye on the quilt and use the button on the handlebar to drop these points. And you know what? I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to grab a ruler and I'm just going to use that ruler to help me line it up. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see the back of the foot mm -hmm. or the side. So now I could put it on the side here, line that ruler up. Now, I know somebody at this point is going to ask and say, well, why wouldn't you just stitch it with a ruler? Well, the number one reason I would answer is because once you create this design in Mark, you can actually save it and then use it in another block, right? Yes, definitely. And also, I don't know, sometimes when you're stitching out with a ruler, you still get wobbles. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a great way to make sure that those lines are, oops, I'm going to undo that last one. Oh, and I'm going to refresh the screen so people can see what I'm actually doing. There we go. Oh, that looks beautiful. Um, yeah, so if they want it to be absolutely straight with the stitching, using Mark is a great tool. All right, so now you're back to where you started. Okay, and I wanted to finish off that last part there. But now I want to come in and do this inside section. Okay. So if we look at the screen at this point, I'm going to hit this. Actually, I'm going to move the machine into position first where right. I want the next 
line to be. Uh -huh. And I'm going to hit the jump button. Right. And if you look at the screen, you see that dashed line. Mm -hmm. That means the machine's going to jump over. It's not going to actually stitch that part. So I can continue around. And I want to come up to where I started. Voila. Perfect. So I'm going to baseline it because I'm happy. Uh -huh. And now I can stitch it out. Pro Stitcher, quilt, and run. Check those settings and proceed. There we go. And resume. Christina, it looks fantastic. Thanks. I really like this design because mm -hmm. it's, it is simple. It yep. matches with the block and just kind of accentuates the, the piecing. And what a great block to use, Mark, on. It's, yep. That's really fantastic. So, Okay, so uh, I think we're advancing the quilt and moving on to the next combining designs, right? Exactly. Okay, yep. let's do that. Okay. All right, so we've got this advanced. We're down here at the bottom. You've got these three, I mean, it's, they're just squares. So, mm -hmm. and because they're lighter, you, I feel like you can actually put kind of a fun design in there because the quilting is going to show a little more. Yes. So, what's your plan? Well, I'm going to keep the dark thread on for this one. Okay. And what I want to do is put a design in this block mm -hmm. and the same design in this block, but I want to have a block or a different one in here that's going to combine oh, the two. I like it. And have it stitch out as one. Okay. Okay. So, the purpose of this one isn't so much like this is how I would do it at home, uh -huh. but I want to teach the technique of how to combine the designs okay. using Pro Stitcher. I love it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring this machine on over here. We're going to bring in a design, and I've already picked out a couple of designs that I'm going to use. Okay. So I'm going to go into open. The first design that I'm going to use is in the Pro Stitcher designs in the triangle folder. Okay. And I'm going to use, oh, which one did I decide on? I think it was this one, Spiral Triangle Continuous. Okay. And I'm going to open that. I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've got a start point and an end point. Mm -hmm. And I want to put it in a square. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you picked a triangle designed for squares. Yeah, and again, this isn't how I would normally do it at home, but I want to show how to combine the designs. Perfect. So I'm going to duplicate that design. So okay. I'm going to go up to the Edit, Duplicate, and you'll notice over here in the workspace on the sidebar that I now have two spiral triangles continuous. Gotcha. So let me refresh. You can see them. The second one, I want to flip it. Okay. So I'm going to modify, and I'm already in Rotate. I'm going to flip. Mm -hmm. And now I want to get the, both of the designs repositioned so that they're going to make a square. Right. So to do that, I've already got my one design selected. I'm mm -hmm. going to go to the Modify Reposition. Okay. And I want my start point to be on my crosshair. Okay. So I'm going to hit Start Point. And then on the next design, I'll select that one. I'm going to do the same thing, Start Point. Okay. So now they're a square. Perfect. So one thing that is going to be an issue if I try to combine those together mm -hmm. is it's going to try to start on this left side, stitch out the top, end on the right side. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to jump over, stitch uh. starting here, starting here, and ending over here. Right. So I'm going to take this bottom one, mm -hmm. and under Modify, I'm going to swap. Okay. And I'm going to baseline that. So now I've got start on the left, end on the right, start on the right, end on the left. Okay. So if I go in and I'm going to go to my multi-select down here at the bottom. Let mm -hmm. me just say real quick what those are. So this button right here with the X is select none. Right. So you're looking at the screen, nothing is selected. Okay. Multi-select is a little bit different where it turns on or off. Mm -hmm. Right now it's turned on and I can pick different designs. So I can tap one design, tap two designs. Mm -hmm. And now if you look over here on the sidebar, I've got a group of them. Perfect. Okay. The other button down here on the left is the select all. Mm -hmm. 
and the computer selects it in whatever order is placed there. So not necessarily the order you want it to stitch in, right? but you can change that around if you okay. need to later. Okay, so I'm going to baseline that. Which effectively combines the two designs. Yep, so if you look on my sidebar now, I just have a merged group. Perfect. I'm going to rename that. I like it. So I hit rename, I'm going to clear, and I'm going to put that as top. And enter. Okay. So now it says top, and that's going to be my top block. Okay. So now I'm going to create an area, uh -huh. and I'm going to try to be pretty precise with this one. Okay. Area, and I'm going to do multi-point. So you're dropping points at the corners. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to get that design to fit in that square. Okay. So first thing I want to do is modify it and rotate it so it's in the proper orientation. So I'm going to do 45 degrees. Okay. And I need to have the start and stop be in the bottom corner so that it can continue hmm. to the next block. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to go in and I'm going to skew it in. Okay. Voila! Perfect. It's ready. I love it. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and baseline that. Mm -hmm. And it's in position now. I'm done with that one. I'm going to clear my area. Okay. I'm going to create the area for the second block here. Okay. And again, I want to be as precise as I can so that those designs can line up. So area, multi-point. So now I'm going to bring in my next design, Okay. file design open. And this one you said is going to be a different design. It's going to be a different design. Okay. This one is going to be in the Diane Henry folder. Mm -hmm. And it is called White, Point, White Pines on Point. Okay. And the reason that I chose this design, I'm just going to drag it over a little bit so you can see it. It's because it has a start point and an end point. Ah on opposite sides. Okay. So it will stitch out starting from the top block, mm -hmm. stitch to the bottom block, and I can continue on to the bottom. All right. Okay, so if I look at this merge group, oh, let's turn off that multi-select. Oh yeah. Okay, if I look at that group, my start and end is in the top left corner. Right. So I need the start point of this design to be in the top right hand corner. Okay. So to do that, modify, rotate. Perfect. Yep. Okay, let's skew it into the block. Voila. I like okay. it. I'm going to baseline that one. Uh -huh. I'm going to now clear the area Okay. and do my third block. Okay. Area tab, multi-point. And this is the most important point right here because I want to make sure that I can get my designs connected. Right. Okay, we're going to refresh. Okay. So the top design. Uh-huh. I want to repeat it again in the bottom bo box. Okay. So I'm going to select that design, edit and duplicate. Okay. And uh, on a real quilt, I would have done this before I had skewed it in mm -hmm. because skewing a skewed design, right. sometimes it gets a little funky. I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. Okay. So I need it so that it is oriented uh -huh. so with the start and stop in the top right corner where the end point is of the middle design. Right. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So let's modify, rotate, oops, undo, <laughs> reset. Let's do the 45, that might work a little bit better. A little faster. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna skew that in. Perfect. Baseline that design. Uh -huh. Okay, now here's gonna be the fun part. Right. To see if I got my starts and ends all in the same place so that they connect. Okay. That is the key with doing combining designs, right? Especially if you're doing like a border going left to right, mm -hmm. um, you've got to make sure the start and ends are on the same plane, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select none, and over here on the right hand side, I'm going to click on workspace so I can see all of these different designs. So top 34, I'm going to rename that bottom. Enter. Okay. That one I can rename center. And I'm only doing this so it's easier for me to make sure I'm doing things in the right order. Okay. Okay, two ways that you can select. 
Right now, my select button is on, mm -hmm. so I can just touch those designs mm -hmm. and move them. Just hit undo. <laughs> undo is your friend. It is your okay? friend. Um, so when you have multi-select on, that's one way you can do it. Or let's select none, turn that multi-select on. I can do it in this workspace over here where right. I can tap top, center, and bottom. Okay and mix that group mm -hmm. and then I can baseline it right and now it's one group with one start point awesome. and one end point very cool so I can have it all stitch out together okay okay I could save this too if I plan to ever use it again mm -hmm. but for right now I'm gonna go ahead and let it stitch okay pro stitcher quilt run check my settings proceed do you think I say the same thing in my head <laughs> enough times I know that I do whenever I use Pro Stitcher. <laughs> File, design, open. <laughs> oh, I didn't set my area very good there. Oh, it looks good from here. You know, that looks really great. I love how you showed us uh, two different ways to combine designs. You took two designs and created a new design, mm -hmm. and then you took essentially three designs, hooked them together so that they would stitch out continuously. It's a yep. great, that's, I, I know that that's something we actually get questions about, so I'm really mm -hmm. glad that you showed everybody how to do that. Yeah, and in real life quilting, mm -hmm. probably the time that people want to know how to do that the most is doing borders and corners. Right. So getting those, the start and the ends right mm -hmm. on top of each other, getting the right order that you want it in, that's the key for combining those designs. And then you saw the, the different tools in the bottom left-hand corner, the yeah. select none, mm -hmm. multi-select, and select all. Remember though, if you use that multi-select that you turn it back off. Yes. <laughs> otherwise you're just randomly selecting designs all the time. <laughs> Don't know how, how that would happen. But. <laughs> yeah, never, never <laughs> happens to us. Be sure to stick around and see some of our favorite quilts that we picked this week from Instagram. These are all quilts that were tagged with hashtag handy quilter. That's how we decide which quilts are gonna be on here. So if you'd like to have your quilt featured, be sure to use that hashtag. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe for more great quilting content and have fun quilting. Mm -hmm.